Hello friends. The 709th day of the war between Russia and Ukraine continues. Guys, at the beginning, I want to say a few words about the frequency of video releases on the channel. The thing is that I still can't learn not to let the information that comes through me. I'm terribly tired of hypocrisy and lies. It shocks me that this is even possible in 2024. What is happening in my country now cannot be described in other words, except for the expression, F up. I am infuriated by the statements of your politicians, who either really do not understand what is happening in Ukraine, or pretend that they do not understand. The statements of my politicians, this is not worth discussing at all, this is some kind of height of cynicism. I didn't believe in conspiracy theories before, but now I have only one question in my head, for whom is the territory of Ukraine being cleared? The most absurd thing is that now I need to close my mouth and not go into detail about what was said above. We have democracy, they said. Let's move on to the reports. In the Kupiansk sector of the Kharkiv direction, the enemy command obviously continues to implement its plan to reach the eastern bank of the Oskil River. After the advance of advanced units in the area between Tabaivka and Krokmalny, the enemy in the near future, quite possibly, will continue his active operations in the direction of Pishchini. But it seems to me that the most likely is a slightly different order of operations for enemy units in this sector. Most likely in the near future, instead of active offensive actions towards Pishchini, the enemy will try to enter the flank and rear of our units defending along the kislivka kotlyarivka line, operating along the R7 road. In addition to this option, it is also quite possible to attempt to reach the rear of our defending units south of the enemy's breakthrough area, in the Barris V area. But in my opinion, this is a more difficult task for enemy troops and actions in the northern direction. In addition, it is obvious that in order to collapse the defense of the Ukrainian armed forces, the enemy will still have to displace Ukrainian units from the Pishchini region. As for the area north and west of Sinkivka, the situation there is no less complex and tense than south of Kotlyarivka. Apparently, the advanced enemy units managed to gain a foothold on the edge of the forest north of Sinkivka, from where they are constantly trying to break through directly into the village or advance beyond it, bypassing it from the west. In the Limon sector, the enemy continues to develop assault operations in the direction of Torsky, Yampolivka, Turney. In recent times, the enemy has made significant advances here. In the Bakhmut sector, according to Babashev, a soldier of the 93rd Brigade, in Bogdanivka the Russians managed to advance about 60 meters, where further advance of the enemy was stopped. In Ivanivsky, as a result, the enemy was advancing and landing from Romov. He advanced about 500 meters there. There was such a situation that the Russians wanted to capture Ivanivsky and even entered this village. There were fierce positional battles there. They were unable to gain a foothold there. They knocked them out for about a day. The Ukrainian armed forces drove them out of Ivanivsky, and the enemy is not currently located in the populated area itself. Also, the enemy, according to our fighter, walked 100 meters in the section from Ivanivsky to Klishivka. In the areas of Klishivka and Kurdumivka, the Russians had no success at all. But the fighting in this area is very strong, Babishev reports. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian military telegram channel Deep State yesterday summed up the results of offensive operations for 2023. According to him, during this period, the Russian army occupied 574 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory and the Ukrainian armed forces, 317 square kilometers. The biggest change following the 2023 offensive is the Russian capture of Bakhmut and Soldar. Ukrainian offensive operations. Cutting off the Vrimovka ledge and the offensive at Robodini. Also on the list is the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian armed forces near Bakhmut in May September 2023. The Russians also advanced to the Zherebets River in the Liman sector near Avdiivka, Kupiansk, Maryanka, and Vulodar. At the same time, if we use Ukrainian data, Russia, which managed to capture more territory in a year, does not have a numerical advantage over the Ukrainian army. The head of the main intelligence directorate, Budonov, 
said in an interview with CNN that there are more than half a million Russian military personnel in Ukraine. Let me note that the other day Zelensky said that the size of the Ukrainian army is 880,000, and perhaps even more since he further said that the armed forces of Ukraine are an army of millions. At the same time, according to Ukrainian military telegram channels, as well as some Ukrainian commanders who gave comments in the media, Kiev is now experiencing a shortage of personnel. This is precisely what was explained in Ukraine by the abandonment of a number of positions in recent weeks. Zelensky himself also said that the military is asking to mobilize half a million people since Russia has established a recruitment of contract soldiers and regularly commissions new forces. In fact, this paradox can be explained simply, out of the million Ukrainian military, not all are on the front line. Some are in reserve and under restoration. Significant forces are located on the border with Russia and Belarus, covering these directions. There is no exact data on how many people on the front line are confronting the half-million Russian army. But earlier, a number of Ukrainian commanders called figures from 300 to 400,000 people. Meanwhile, Western media are increasingly writing that Ukraine is switching to a defensive strategy and building fortifications, fearing an offensive by Russian troops, including due to previously suffered losses that do not have time to be replaced. Two plausible conclusions can be drawn from these data. The first is that the Ukrainian armed forces do not have a numerical advantage at the front. Therefore, we are forced to urgently tighten mobilization and dig in. Secondly, the Russians also have an advantage in the number of shells, missiles, and aircraft. At the same time, the Ukrainian army has a serious deficit here, as Western media constantly write about with reference to Ukrainian military officials. True, this is partly compensated by the widespread use of FPV drones by the Ukrainian armed forces. At the same time, judging by the words of the head of the main intelligence department, Budonov, the Ukrainian army plans to accumulate forces and means over the next few months. In his opinion, Russia will end its offensive at the beginning of spring as it will exhaust its forces and then the Ukrainian army will go on the offensive. We make a move, the enemy makes a move, now it's their turn, they'll finish and then it'll be our turn, he said. This statement has already caused criticism in Ukraine. Budanov was reminded of his never-fulfilled forecast about the entry of the Ukrainian army into Crimea last spring. Commentators are wondering why the head of intelligence is again creating high expectations in society by making any specific forecasts for the near future. Friends, this channel exists solely thanks to your support. If you have the opportunity and desire to support the channel, I will be very grateful to you. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.